Hello and welcome to Beastopilosus, the hairy beast, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. You can recognize your mother, you can recognize your grandmother, but can you recognize your great, 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 great grandmother? The truth is that we don't think much about our deep past. And when we talk about prehistory and the fossil record of our common ancestry, things get a little murky. Each generation tends not to think about previous generations. And when you get a dozen generations into the past, the amount of information begins to degrade into evidence that's left behind by ruins, old manuscripts, and archaeological science. Jesus lived only a hundred generations ago. King Tut, 166 generations. But what about the fossil record, our earliest ancestors, the birth of our species? How many greats do you need to go back? To calculate, we need to know the length of time in years, but also the average generational period. The interval of time from a person's birth to when they became a parent. I became a father at the age of 29, so my generation is 29 years in length. But my mother had me when she was 30, and her mother, my grandmother, had her when she was 39. But as we go back into time, the generational age gets smaller, or does it? Evidence suggests that the menarche, the age a woman can conceive a child, was much later in life, around age 20, several thousand years ago, because of poor nutrition. Thus, the average generational period has varied from 20 to 30 years. 20 years seems like a good average generational length. Our species, Homo sapiens, first appeared in Ethiopia 200,000 years ago, or 10,000 generations ago. Try saying great 10,000 times. My great, 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 great. Oh, I give up. In fact, it would take me about three hours to say my ancestor's relationship to me. Ugh. You really don't want to watch a three hour long YouTube video, do you? But our record goes even further back. Genetic studies have suggested that an ancestor living 338,000 years ago would be our common relative based on genetic phylogenies. The great granddaddy of all, which would be 16,900 generations, otherwise known as generation number one, the first generation of our species. At 1.8 million years ago, Homo erectus first appeared and was the first early human to leave Africa, discover fire, and had the ability to build complex tools for the first time. At this point, we are 90,000 generations, which would take me over a day to say. My great, 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 well, you get the point. At 3.6 million years ago, we have the famous trackway left behind by Australopithecus afrensis at Le Tuonia, Kenya. It was generation 180,000, or 180,000 greats, which would take me over two days to say even further into the past. We reach Ardipithecus ramdicus, who lived 4.4 million years ago, 220,000 generations ago. Likely more because Ardipithecus likely had a shorter lifespan than our recent family. So it was likely about twice as many generations ago. Something like 400,000 generations. So it'd take me 
five days to say my great 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 you get the point grandmother the origin of primates that is the order that we all belong to here i mean the u primates the primates of modern appearance including the early anthropoid primates we're looking at 55 million years ago which would be budging of the generational ages to 10 years here 5.46 million generations or two and a half months of me saying great 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 great